Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back to Transforming Pain and Bondage into Freedom. I love it. I absolutely love it. I hope you're having fun with this series, enjoying looking into yourself. I hope that you've been doing the homework. Remember, Jung said intellectualism is a common cover-up for fear of direct experience. What does that mean? If you just think because you can say the words or read it out of a book that you got it, you're an intellectual and you're avoiding the actual work of growth in yourself, in your relationships, in your life, with your challenges. And challenges are always opportunities. We are in spirit gym. We go to the gym and we meet resistance to grow muscle. And as we get stronger, we just increase the resistance. But a lot of us are a lot more comfortable going into a gym and meeting resistance than we are dealing with the resistance within ourselves emotionally or mentally, all of which is essentially spiritually. So this is our seventh of seven. This will be the last in the series. We will cover the crown chakra today. I'll begin by reminding you that my multimedia ebook, The Last Four Doctors You'll Ever Need, has a lot of valuable information for any of you that wants to truly have a healthy, balanced lifestyle. The second edition of my How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy book has the essential four doctor um, components in it, and I show you how to identify your dream. The questionnaires help you identify where you're out of balance. I show you how to establish your own dream affirmative four doctor core values. So values for creating happiness, values for movement, values for diet, and values for rest. And I talk about the importance of rotation dieting here, which is very important in our toxic world. And I show you how to do zone exercise. Remember in this book, I use the word zones instead of chakras because so many people get wigged out over the concept of a chakra, which is usually just immaturity, insecurity, and brainwashing. A lot of it religious, unfortunately. And as I've stated before, chakras are no longer airy-fairy, foo-foo stuff. They are very, very well validated scientifically. I gave resources for that. I gave a few. There's too many to give them all. And I also suggested this book, The Book of Chakra Healing by Liz Simpson, which is prerequisite reading for our Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 2 students. Uh, coming into the program, though I have probably got over a hundred books on the chakra system, if you want a really nicely done, very readable, well illustrated book that covers a lot of things I couldn't begin to cover in this seven part series because they're too deep, and a lot of the things that I can't cover here I do get into in Czech Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 2, and then we get even more deep in Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 3. So with that preface, let's get into our crown chakra journey today. I've got a bunch of neat stuff to share with you. If we look at the crown chakra, the colors are violet and white. Uh, the kind of purplish, I didn't have a violet here, so I used a purple, but it doesn't show up well, so I counterbalanced it with a little white to bring it out. So the reason the colors, remember the colors of the rainbow correlate to the chakras, starting at the bottom, red, root, orange, second, um, yellow, third, green, fourth, blue, fifth, indigo, sixth, violet, seventh. Um, if you have a hard time remembering the colors of the rainbow, just remember the name Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv, R-O-Y-G-B-I-V, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Also, the chakras energetically correlate to the musical tone scale. So, Roy G. Biv correlates to Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. And light 
has an octave relationship to sound. So there are sounds for each of the chakras. There are uh, many of the books, such as Chinese medicine or Taoist books, actually give you tones that you can make to balance the energies. But you can just use the tone scale and practice your Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Di. If you get it just right, Di. You'll feel energy moving through your crown. Yay. And then your Do. If you get your Do right, you'll feel energy moving through your feet down into the earth. And a little tip for you if you want to do a little daily tune up is you will find something interesting. The tones that you have a hard time making on any given day are usually reliable indicators to where you have discordant energy or blockages in a given chakra system. So let's say you have a hard time with ray. Your ray just isn't raying very well. And again, you want to feel the energy. So your do isn't just a sound that you make. You have to Put your hand down, you know, in your genital region. Uh, the root chakra comes out between the legs. But if you're touching down low and you do do, you've got to do a, do a glissando or a slide until you feel the vibration coming through that body part. So if I go do, that's way up here. Do, 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 do. does it? Re, me, me. Me is easy. That's the third chakra. It's all about me. And a little tip for you. Have a big smile. Me, 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 me. There it is. Boom. Got it. there Fa <laughs> it can be very fun um, I like to do it in my car when I'm driving if I got to go to an appointment or work with a client especially if it's a challenging client I got to harmonize myself and put myself in the state that I would love to invite them into energetically so there's lots of great ways to Love yourself, take care of yourself. And you remember one of the questions a shaman asks you, a real shaman, if you come to see them with a problem, is when did you stop singing? And for a lot of people, that was a long time ago. So singing the tone scale is a beautiful way to practice singing and bring the child out of yourself. And the harder the time you have doing it, the more repressed the child is. And the more likely you are to be seeing doctors and psychologists and psychiatrists and be put on uh, psychotropic drugs of some kind to modulate your depression or your anxiety. A lot of that can be done just by loving yourself and being honest with yourself and uh, entering spirit gym with an open heart every day to do the best you can do. So... A couple of things I wanted to tell you uh, before I get into all the seven chakra specific stuff. I haven't mentioned this yet. The crown chakra is the seventh, but the chakras have male and female relationships. So two, four, and six are the female. One, three, five, and seven are the male chakras. And they actually spin typically in opposite directions. So I won't go into the technical analysis because that's not what this is all about. Uh, th that would be more for therapists. But the energy of them, the males, generally spin in the opposite direction. And there's a working system there. So often if you have a disruption in the second, it will have an effect quite strongly on the fourth or the sixth. If you have a disrupt in any of the uh, odd numbers or males, they tend to interact with each other 
more strongly. They're all connected together, but you will see, for example, if someone does not feel safe and secure, well, then it's them, me, I, me, that doesn't feel safe and secure. And if they're not able to effectively express fifth chakra, what their challenge or fear is, then they have a hard time resolving it and it leaves them feeling disconnected to a larger whole. The second is the home of your life force energy, your kidneys, your adrenals, your sex organs. So that's where our core vital energy is. The fourth is the home of the heart, which as I showed previously, integrates the lower and the upper three. And the sixth relates to your brain, your central nervous system, eyes, um, and insight. So if things are working right, you feel safe. When you feel safe, you have the comfort to express your life force energy creatively, which means you are acting from your authentic self. And when you have that, it's easy to express your love. And when you have safety and can express your power, and you feel good about yourself and you're in love, it's much easier to communicate and to create out of love. And that makes it easier for you to see into yourself and see into things to get beyond the surface appearances of things and helps keep your nervous system healthy. And when you do that, you have a greater sense of connection to the whole because you quickly learn that there's almost nothing you can do by yourself. I love to paint, but somebody makes my paintbrushes. Someone makes my paint. I don't do that myself. Someone makes my canvases. Someone made the furniture in my house. Someone made this blackboard. Someone made my clothes. So part of the connection that we get in the seventh is the realization that any one of us alone is um, fairly feeble in comparison to our power when coupled with others working in harmony to create love, safety, security, sustenance, procreation and creation and, and uh, meaningful things in the world. So now if we look at before I get into uh, the parts of the body, the, the theme of the seventh chakra, the, the archetypal theme is I am. So if, and this is one of the most ancient questions in spiritual development. Um, if you study yoga, for example, it's a, it's a commonly used meditation in yoga. So you answer the question I am by meditating on that question and opening yourself to whatever rises. And it's a deep question. It's not something like I'm human or I'm Paul Czech. It's much deeper than that. And uh, I don't want to tell you the answer because you might fall into the trap of thinking you know it and not do the uh, exploration yourself. Now, the other theme that goes along with the seven chakra is ego as an archetype and guru or God as an archetype. Um, so when we're immature and we're younger and we're sort of full of ourselves, then the ego pretends that it's God and thinks it can control everything and kind of tries to run the show, but inevitably that leads to challenges in relationships, challenges in creating things, challenges in a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and I've had my share, believe me. Um, so, you know, in, in Hinduism, there's a beautiful saying, Brahman is Atman, and Atman is Brahman. So what does that mean? Brahman is a Hindu word for God. Atman is the word for soul. God is soul. God is self. And self is God. Soul is God. Atman is Brahman. So we grow through our life 
And we go through childhood, we become a teenager, we reject mom and dad's ideas, which is very important. Not that you have to reject them all, but we need to figure out who we are so that we begin to individuate. Without individuation, we just recapitulate mommy and daddy and our genes don't evolve, the world doesn't evolve, and we all still be riding around on horses shooting bow and, bows and arrows. Um, so when we go through this process of evolution, we come to the realization that everything's supporting us. So we realize, you know, everything we eat and drink and breathe comes from out there, and everything that we're eating couldn't be here without the sun. And the sun couldn't be here without the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is part of the universe. So what happens is we start, when we're asking this I am question, we may have this experience of, if we've got enough knowledge in life experience, we come to really ask this question, you know, who am I? And that can also be coupled with what am I? So what starts to happen is you start to, to see things like, well, you know, geez, all my cells are turning over. Current research shows every year all the cells in your body turn over. So you're really like a, a, a moving fountain. Um, you just look the same and your thoughts and emotions are fairly consistently the same within yourself. You know, like I don't wake up on any given day and think, oh my God, I'm not Paul anymore. What happened? But... I look in the mirror and I seem to be me. Yes, I'm certainly aging. You know, I'm 58 now, so um, I don't look quite as chipper as I used to. I mean, my skin's aging, my body's aging. I can't train as hard as I used to, but it's all good. I'm digging it, you know. And so through this process, we kind of start wising up a little bit. Instead of thinking you're a badass because you can bench press a certain amount of weight or outrun your friend or whatever or you got more money than the next guy you start f sort of opening like a flower getting more and more cosmic awareness and earthly awareness and realizing wow i couldn't be here without the earth i can't be here without water i couldn't be here without breath so i need the whole atmosphere that surrounds the earth i couldn't be here without warmth and i couldn't be here without the sun i couldn't be here without space so where does the space in me end and the space in you begin? I'm standing in, in my office right now, which is in a beautiful house on top of a mountain, and I'm looking out the door, and it looks to the untrained eye like the space in the house is somehow separate from the space outside the house, but really the wall's made of a bunch of atoms that are 99.999 to the 6th or ninth decimal point, I haven't looked it up in a while, empty. So really it's an illusion. So there is no discontinuation of space. There's no uh, place where space is not continuous. So though you have this sense of self, third chakra, and your sense of border barrier self-definition, as you grow and mature and get deeper into meditation, you start realizing that's actually quite an illusion because when you start looking at the, the uh, science, for example, on energy fields, well, you know, <laughs> I've measured people's energy fields and they can be 60 feet from their body. So, you know, when you come see someone that's happy or whole or you go see someone like Master Fong Ha who taught me Tai Chi, this guy's energy field is affecting you at least 60 feet away, if not more. So you're looking at him or at me over there, you know, at a distance, but you don't realize you're actually standing inside of me and I may be standing inside of you. Which brings up a, a point. Most people think that their soul is in their body, but in actual fact, their body is inside their soul. Remember, soul is the receptive experiential principle the feminine principle and spirit is the flow of energy and information if there was no flow of energy and information into you through your chakra systems to guide and direct your cells and then from your cells and your own inner experiences and your mental functions out back into the universe uh, then there would be no you you, you even a rock has uh, energy and information flowing into it and out of it at all times so 
the point that I'm making is the archetypes at the seventh chakra are ego and God. And why are those two important? Because at the ego level, the ego thinks it is God. It thinks it can control everything. It, you know, has a problem if, if uh, it gets stuck in a traffic jam or its paycheck doesn't show up on time in the mail or somebody doesn't show up when they expected them to. Um, if they make an investment, it goes south, they get all pissed off and want to tear the house down, not realizing that's just part of the ebb and flow of life and, or, or maybe they didn't pay enough attention when they were making the investment. And then as we grow, we come to the realization that there's certain situations we get into that we can't get out of with the ego process. As Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that created it, and it's the ego that's usually doing that. So earlier we talked about the heart and about connection, and we talked about insight, looking into yourself or looking into things. So at the seventh chakra, we're, we're now looking at the grand picture of who am I and what's the reach of my existence what what does it take to really create this miracle manifestation of perceptive self which is really an illusion because the self the little s-e-l-f ego the i can only be here if it's in the cocoon of the capital s-e-l-f i.e the world which can't be here without capital s capital e capital l capital l uh, f self in all caps the cosmos or the universe beyond which is the mysterious unknown unknowable and Taoism Wu Chi not life something that we can't even contextualize okay so my point is when ego begins to realize that to grow and evolve and to experience the truth of itself it must go beyond itself then the archetype shifts from I to uh, the whole one way to say that is to God but that confuses a lot of people because they have weird ideas or immature ideas about God such as my God versus your God which is a great way to mess your seventh chakra up I'll tell you more about that in a minute so the key archetypes is I as ego and God as all at the seventh chakra. And um, what I'm really saying here is that if you're stuck in a pathological way, in a way that's damaging to you and your relationships and, and to your relationship with life itself, you can have seventh chakra dysfunctions of which will produce symptoms that I'll describe in a minute. If you're open and you're whole and you're growing your holiness your connection to the whole then you're likely to have a balanced seventh chakra and feel connected and actually paradoxically feel safe even in very challenging or scary times um, i'm very fortunate myself because through some profound childhood experiences i had a deep and profound connection to god and uh, became aware that God was not uh, some guy that's going to punish you for uh, sinning, so to speak. Um, and that connection took away my fear of death. And I've also done a lot of explorations on the issue of death. And so when I was a paratrooper or when I was racing motorcycles or uh, various other wild and scary situations um, even though I had some real seriously bad injuries and internal bleeding and many broken bones and multiple concussions and being unconscious for sometimes multiple days at a time not even knowing if I was alive or dead um, I always had an inner sense of calm because my childhood experiences had opened the door to the archetype of God or the ultimate sense of connection, which means that my crown chakra flows and reaches into deeper connection. So I always have had this sense of 
it'll always work out okay in the end, even if you die. If the worst thing that happens is you die, you just become one with the ocean of unconditional love. This is why I like to quote Rumi, who says, you're not a drop of the ocean. You are the ocean in a drop. You are not separate from God. You are an expression of God, is another way to say that. Okay, so with some of these little details that I thought it might be helpful to know, and, and believe me, this can get very technical. We can, we can get out highly technical measuring equipment. I've been on and used lots of different techniques for analyzing these things. You can use pendulums. You can use, you know, my favorite is just using my hand. One of my favorite tools for assessing the chakras actually is a feather, which is very sensitive to subtle vibration. And I've done demonstrations for people to show them what you can learn from a feather, and it's quite surprising. So now when we're talking about the crown chakra, the seventh chakra, the body parts that the energy flow is connected to, in other words, where might you have physical symptoms if you have a crown chakra dysfunction or disruption, the crown of the head, well, that's where it's at. It literally comes out of the crown of your head. And if you study books or researchers or talk to clairvoyants that can see uh, what the physical eye can't see, such as myself, you can actually see that when someone dies, the soul leaves through the crown of the head. And that's the most common observation out there. Are there other ways out? Possibly. I mean, what if someone's head gets blown off? So, um, you know, there's really what's leaving is energy and information. That's what's leaving. You, you are ultimately energy and information. So um, it's not like uh, <laughs> some little man or woman climbs out the top of your head. Um, it's a flow of energy and information within which you are contained in higher vibrational bodies. So when I see people clairvoyantly, I see what looks like them made of light. So there is that to it. But ultimately, all of that is a flow of energy and information. Okay. So the crown of the head, the upper skull, uh, it relates to the cerebral cortex, which is the neocortical brain, the new brain. It's the part of us that's different than, than most of the animal kingdom. It lets us uh, think creatively, solve problems, do mathematics, geometry, make music, uh, do things that most other uh, creatures in the animal kingdom don't do. Um, it also connects to the right brain, which is the brain of wholeness, interestingly, how things fit together. Someone who's too left brain does things like deny God or deny anything that can't be weighed and measured, while all the while forgetting that their mother's love was the most nourishing thing to them. Their father's love and the love and appreciation of others is what makes their whole life meaningful, but they can't weigh and measure that. And ultimately, God is love. So you have a lot of scientists, atheists who deny God but forget that you can't weigh and measure the very thing that they all admit that is important in their life, which is love. And then it links to the pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland produces DMT, uh, which is known as the most powerful drug in the world. And actually, we have quite a lot of it in our bodies. And when we're in extremely stressful situations, the pineal gland's been shown to release DMT, and at death, it is suggested by researchers that there's quite a release of DMT, which I believe from my own experiments and research in these areas, that the DMT helps dislodge the soul from the body to let us release ourselves from the body. And I imagine there's probably a handful of you out there that have actually uh, experienced a DMT journey on, uh, you know, a medicine journey at a, a shamanic circle or uh, something along those lines. And um, if you've had uh, a legitimate DMT journey, you know for sure that your soul can uh, get out of that body pretty easily. Uh, not something to mess around with, by the way. 
I personally know six people that have died playing around with DMT. So be warned, these are not uh, tools for kids or teenagers. Uh, the seventh chakra also links to the skin, and it's interesting, embryologically, the skin is actually brain tissue. What you call your skin grows out of the same tissue that makes your brain when you're forming in the womb. So the skin is actually the sensory pole of the brain. If you cut someone's skull open like a surgeon, you can scoop their whole brain out and feed it to them. They wouldn't feel a damn thing because there's no sensory neurons in the brain. The sensory pole of the brain is the skin that covers your whole body. And interestingly enough, every single thing that's touching your skin or interacting with your skin is actually interacting with your brain because they're embryologically the same tissue. Okay? Now, the crown chakra has a positive polarity. Uh, if you study the polarity of the body, you can look at people like, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Tennant, MD. If you're interested in more about the polarity and the electromagnetics of the body, um, look up Jerry Tennant, MD, and you'll learn a lot of neat stuff, but this has been known for a long time. If you look at the work of Randolph Stone, who's he created the uh, excellent books on polarity therapy, which I've studied quite a bit and use, you'll learn a lot about polarity. Uh, if you understand the basic principles of reflexology, they're all based on polarity. Um, so the positive polarity, just think of your battery in your car, it has to have a red wire, a positive wire, and a black wire, or it won't work. Your engine won't start, and none of your electronics will work. So you could say that energetically, the crown chakra is where the red wire goes, and the feet touching the earth is where the black wire goes. And so that allows energy to flow through you. Positive is a drawing current. So electronically, just remember positive sucks. And your base of electrons is in your negative or your earth. So you have this interesting current flowing up. And just as the sun inspires the plants to grow up or is a source of levity, and the earth is, you could think of as a source of gravity, these two polarities have this yin-yang dynamic of gravity and levity, and this levity is not just the levity like uh, your body floating in space, it's the levity of emotions, it's the levity of intention, it's the, the willingness to go beyond, to grow, to do better, to reach beyond, to um, grow your knowledge base, to grow your connection to people, to grow your understanding of life and the universe and spirituality and who and what you are. So the crown chakra has this archetypal attractive force that draws us into the awareness of more of, of ourselves, which turns out to be everything, everybody. Okay? So the themes operating at the crown chakra, well, spirituality is a key theme, and many people have different concepts of what spirituality is, but I think I've mentioned it in the series, I'll mention it again. Spirituality at its essence, aside from the moral elements, uh, which are kind of, um, shall we say, expressions of religiosity, uh, so there's spirituality within each of the world's major religions, and but the spiritual components of religions transcend the barriers of religion. So somebody who is acting spiritually, regardless of what religion they are, has a moral obligation to protect life and to act from a place of love, which is what all the mystics have been telling us no matter what religion they come from, whether they're uh, Jewish rabbis or Sufi mystics or Christian mystics or, uh, you know, advanced Buddhist uh, monks, uh, Taoist monks, priests from Shinto, you, you, you name it, uh, when you get to the core of spiritual awakening, spiritual release, and spiritual practices, it's all about um, love and appreciation, empathy, compassion, 
and an understanding of the principle of unity or wholeness, which is really what holy means. Okay? So, if you're having a hard time with connecting to a greater whole, and you're trapped in the ego identification through religion, which means an ethnocentric interpretation of religion, which is my group against your group. We are the chosen ones. Or if you don't take Jesus as your savior, you're uh, going to burn in hell. Or if you're not a Muslim, you're an infidel. I mean, I could go through the, the list, but that's an egocentric interpretation of a religion that is not at all what the mystics taught, and the mystics are the most evolved people in religion. Jesus was a mystic. Buddha was a mystic. Um, you know, I could give you a long, long list of names, but they may be saints to you, but they're generally mystics unless they're corporatized saints. In other words, somebody that the Catholic Church sainted because they followed the rules really well, or something like that. Um, that's another topic. But, so we have spirituality, we have transcendence at the seventh chakra to, to go beyond, to transcend. When, the, uh, when, the, when you look at the stages of morphogenesis that a butterfly goes through, it starts off as larva, then it becomes a caterpillar, then it uh, builds its cupa or its cocoon, and then it turns into a butterfly. Those are all stages of transcendence. We start off as a child with a fairly um, expansive consciousness, but not really a deep sense of self-awareness. And then we progressively develop our intellectual awareness and our social awareness and we developed uh, awareness of ethics and morals, and we develop awareness of what we are in relationship to the world. So those are all just examples of transcendence. And for someone whose uh, crown chakra is not functioning correctly, or it's functioning uh, in a way that mirrors your belief system, transcendence is an issue. So when I'm looking at people who are blocked in their ability to transcend, it's normal to find that there's a disruption of the flow of energy, which means energy cannot flow through the circuit. And when energy doesn't flow through the circuit, lo and behold, you will see what kind of problems it causes when I get there. So again, the question, who am I? The seventh chakra is really a lot about death. Um, it's very much about death. Uh, one of the reasons is because we leave through the crown, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but it's not just about the actual death of your physical body. It's about the death of relationships. It's about the death of uh, agreements. It's about the death of pets. It's about the death of anything that we love. It's about the death of um, our job, maybe. So wherever there's a coming to an end, be it an actual physical death or a metaphorical death, then we're now being put into a state of transcendence. And how we handle that determines whether or not the butterfly grows wings and becomes a butterfly or whether it gets eaten by a bird because it's um, <laughs> hanging around as a caterpillar. Okay, so death again, relates wherever the archetype of death relates, wherever there's a real coming to an end. Um, you could say graduating from high school is the death of the high schooler and the birth of the college student, for example. If you have a hard time with that, then you could, uh, uh, someone who's good at reading subtle energies could pick that up by reading the energy coming out of your crown chakra or that's around you there. It's also very related to our beliefs about God. In fact, um, having been assessing chakras and energy fields for a very long time, I can't remember how long it's been, uh, but these concepts have been alive in my life. You remember my mother's a yogi, so I've been uh, exposed to these concepts since I was 12. 
And uh, I don't think I can remember in my career finding a single person who had a crown chakra dysfunction that didn't have some kind of challenging relationship with regard to their beliefs about God, either believing there is no God or transcendent um, reality or wholeness or something uh, beyond it. The biggest challenge is thinking you know what God is. That's, <laughs> that's the day you actually don't know what God is. That's one of the paradoxes of God. You can't define God. You just, if you do, then you haven't. Now, how's that for a nice little Mexican finger trap? So when people think, my God wants me to do this, and my God says I've got to do that, and if I don't do this, God's going to burn me in hell, and if I don't follow this rule, then you've now created an idea. You've now um, turned a symbol, which is something that points beyond itself into a sign, which becomes a dead energy, which is why Friedrich Nietzsche said God is dead. He meant that people actually think they know what God is and what God wants, and therefore they fall in love with books and things written on pages. So instead of looking into their heart, they look into books. Instead of connecting to the wholeness of themselves and connecting to the relationships and to the flow of ener the energy we call love, they look into a book, and there they read symbols on a page which are now trying to... Um, encapsulate the unencapsulable as symbols which are really signs if you pull up to a stop sign there's usually no debate about what it means so if you have a bunch of people believing that god is the same thing but it's a different than what other people believe then you have now stop signed to god okay that'll cause problems at the seventh chakra it's also linked directly to intuition Remember, the sixth chakra and the seventh chakra are both linked to the brain. But the seventh chakra, because it's got a lot of transcendent energies and it's sort of the end of our physical body, is uh, linked to the wholeness. And intuition is not um, a process that requires or works with thinking. In fact, um, if you look at the functions of consciousness as outlined by Jung, you have thinking and feeling that are juxtaposed and sensing and intuiting. So, for example, if I'm sensing the hardness of this water bottle, I have to describe it and feel it and try to say, well, this feels like a water bottle. If sensation's active, intuition has to be shut down because intuition would work like this. Hmm when did the concept of the bottle first emerge? And then holding the question and being open to flashes of insight that come from out of nowhere. And somehow you get the answer. Meanwhile, the person next to you asking the question is researching book after book after book, and they may or may not come to the same answer but your intuition really is linking yourself to the mind of the universe and asking questions of the rest of yourself, which requires that your programmed mind stop functioning. The programmed mind or the individual mind is like a garbage disposal because thinking chops things up into bite-sized pieces. If I say, look at the white cat, you automatically exclude cats of any other color. It's chopping the whole up. Intuition, it works on the principle of wholeness. So if you have a question and then you relax your mind, you set your intention, the intuition just, shall we say, brings you the other half. So the question, where did the idea of a water bottle come from, carries the answer within itself. You can't do that through thinking uh, you can do it through intuition. Now, you can look up other people's ideas through thinking. You can use Google, which is everybody else's ideas, but it's not intuition. Okay? 
Now, if the crown chakra is too open, there's too much energy going through it, which can happen for a variety of different reasons, uh, from exposure to strobe lights on dance floors, to flashing lights of cars going by, to the reflectors on roads, to vibration, uh, are some uh, ways it can happen. Um, the use of psychedelic drugs can open your all of your chakras and stop you from being able to regulate them naturally, which most people don't realize they're doing, but they are. So when you're using uh, a lot of different drugs, they can affect your chakra system and disrupt your ability to regulate your chakras. And I could give you a long explanation and discussion on that, but it would make this video too long. Uh, but many of the people that have problems like entities, for example, um, pick them up in groups where a bunch of people are doing things like ayahuasca, mushrooms, LSD, uh, and all those different types of drugs that are often used non-spiritually, such as doing LSD and going to a rock concert. Well, that is a very good way to get yourself an entity, and that's a very good way to create lots of interesting problems for yourself. Um, so if it's too open, then you see psychotic or manic behavior. You can have manic depressive behavior, so you're switching from uh, open and wild and everything's awesome to depressive. Um, so it's, a, it's like a pendulum just swinging back and forth. It's very hard to be around a person like that because you never know what the hell you're going to get. Um, people with too open of crown chakra often feel frustration. They have often got a confused sexual expression. Now that can mean a variety of things. It could mean that maybe they're not sure if they're heterosexual or homosexual or bisexual but in my experience when people's crown chakras are are more open than is ideal which usually has something to do with either an external stimuli like i mentioned or the use of drugs remember the crown chakra is about connecting to the whole so a person with too open a crown chakra can actually lose their sense of is it rational or wise to be sexually intimate with somebody? So you can, for example, have people doing drugs that are in a committed married relationship, but all of a sudden they're having wild, passionate sex with someone they just met 20 minutes ago and thinking it's all God, man, it's all good. So kind of like a, a 60s hippie revival. And that can lead to pregnancies, it can lead to sexually transmitted diseases, it can lead to confusion, it can lead to tremendous guilt and shame because all of a sudden the drug wears off and you go, wow, what did I do? And then you either have to bury it and tell lies for however long you can do it or you have to come clean and then that, you know, you, I don't need to explain that to you, I hope. Um, it's a problem. Uh, you can have a sense of unrealized power. So if the crown chakra is open, you sense your potential, you sense your connection, and you can sense, interestingly, that you could probably do anything you really set your heart and your mind to, but because it's an imbalance, too open of a chakra, the rest of you is not in harmony with that idea. So you can af actually have this sense that you can save the world or that you can write the one book that will teach everybody how to be free or you know any number of expressions of a sense of unrealized power. Now, if it's blocked, then you see chronic fatigue is quite common. Well, remember, if your battery terminals get corroded, some of you have had the experience of turning the key on your car and it just goes click, 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 like a little buzzing sound because the terminals are corroded. So you're not getting a good enough flow of electricity to turn the starter over to fire the engine up. 
So if our crown chakra is blocked, it's as though somebody's corroded the positive terminal and we lose our sense of connection and energy does not flow through us effectively. And there's many great books showing how energy flows through your energy field. Um, we, so then what happens is we are not drawing energy in from the environment. Uh, we are actually relying only on food and water uh, and sleep. But that's not enough. Um, a good example is when they take people and put them in Faraday cages, which are magnetic electromagnetic uh, shields that block electromagnetic information, which they use a lot for scientific studies where they have sensitive instruments. They feel very disconnected, and they, it can actually lead to psychological disturbances and health problems. So very similar to when your seventh chakra is closed, you're too closed off from your connection to life, to, the, to nature, to people. So it can leave you um, very, very low energy. And uh, it's one of the ways you can figure out how much the universe is supporting you all the time, is to get trapped in that situation where your crown chakra is blocked. And um, it can cause you to have a hard time making decisions and it can leave you with no sense of belonging. Um, you can feel all, all alone in the world, even when you're sitting with friends and family, because it's blocking the flow of connection. So we're, remember I talked about being in someone else's field, but if your field is disrupted, you may not feel the subtle, often unconscious connection to other people, and it can lead you to having... Um, sort of a, um, a magnified sense of isolation, which a lot of people have today. Okay, so there's some things about it. Now let's kind of close up here with our uh, pyramid. Our, our um, you know, I call this an archetype pyramid, where we find our Zen path the most efficient way. So if your crown chakra is blocked, you, you have to say, well, how's that going to affect my dream? If it's too open, if you know, so too little, blocked, well, you get these kinds of symptoms, psychotic, manic, depressive, frustrated, confused sexual expression, sense of unrealized power, uh, chronic fatigue, can't make decisions, no self sense of belonging. Well, that's too little crown. Too much, well, then you have, uh, you know, like I, well, I, I gave you symptoms of too open, but you have the symptoms of too open, psychotic, manic, depressive. Blocked with chronic fatigue, can't make decisions, no sense of belonging. Either way, you, you know, I don't think it takes a whole lot of uh, brain power to realize neither of those uh, polarities, too little or too much, is really helpful at all. It leads to lots of problems, which is what people like me work with every day. Death. Well, if we don't have enough death in our life, transition, letting go, I mean, if you don't want to die to the third grade, you'll never become a fourth grader. If you don't want to come to the honest realization that your, your love affair or your uh, partnership with your boyfriend or girlfriend or your marriage uh, isn't working and maybe you don't have the desire to make it work because you've just got this sense that it's over now and, and it's time for me to go find someone more compatible to me, but you stay in the relationship, well, I, you know, it only takes one rotten apple to ruin the barrel. I mean, most of you have enough kind of awareness to know what that would be like. If we have too much death, well, then we kill relationships. We kill opportunities. We overkill animals and plants to feed ourselves and we end up being fat sick people hint hint um, so you can see that working with the concept of letting go and the the sort of symbolic metaphor here is the snake that sheds its skin that is a symbol of death and letting go in tarot death is number 13 and number 20 is judgment, letting go of your judgments to come into a greater awareness of the beauty and the perfection of life and all that is. Um, intuition, if we have a lack of intuition, then we're stuck inside of our programmed mind. 
If we're only using intuition, well, we may not be using our rationality and our common sense. Intuition is an unrational process. But logical thinking is a rational process. So if we're overly intuitive, we, uh, we can get such lofty ideas and such big picture concepts that they may not fit in. Um, you know, I could give you examples. You could have an, an idea for creating a world religion that will unify all religions. And it might be a great idea. But if you don't have the sense of logic and a deep enough understanding of why religion is the way it is and why people are the way they are, you will probably take the greatest idea in the world to a bunch of people and be looked at like an absolute fool because they're not capable of seeing and understanding a concept that's that far beyond their own level of conscious development. Therefore, you need a fairly high level of rational, logical thinking about how to create steps that are clear and easy to follow for people to grow into a concept like that. And then connection. Your seventh chakra is your sense of connection, particularly to what's in the transcendent realms, what's beyond your sensory um, range of perception. Uh, what happens when you die? Uh, where did my dog go when it died or my cat go? So um, if we lose our sense of connection, well, too little connection and you're trapped in yourself. Too much connection, you lose yourself. So when you start looking at these concepts, look into your own life, say, what is my dream? What, what am I, and if not, if not your dream, what is my most important goal or objective for myself right now? Is it to get myself healthy, graduate from college, to um, find a partner to live my life with, to build my business? So that goes there. What do I need to die to to become the person that I dream myself or goal myself to be? What might I get very still and very quiet inside and ask for the help of the universe or great spirit to figure out because I can't seem to find it in books and on the internet and from other people? That's a great invitation to use your intuition and that gives you the pieces. Now, intuition comes very similar to the way a gut feeling does. There are differences, significant differences between instincts and intuition, but I don't have time to go through all that. And then where do I need to increase or decrease connection to manage the flow of energy, information, and resources so that I am most likely to be efficient? If I have too many friends texting me and calling me, too many obligations, I'll go crazy because I can't get anything done. And if I don't have enough connection, then I don't have enough love and support and maybe um, help to do what I uh, choose to do as my dream goal or objective. Okay? So I think that covers the crown chakra. The series is meant to be followed from one to seven because the themes of the chakras build on key things. And they are also related to your developmental sequence. Remember, as we grow and develop, we grow in psychophysical themes. So safety, security, um, sexual identity, uh, personal power, developing an ego, learning how to love, learning how to communicate effectively and create effectively, uh, using our insight and our thinking processes effectively, and um, connecting to the whole and uh, realizing we're in a transformative process. So if you want to understand everything and you want to use it to its potential, I would recommend you do the exercises I've outlined and the meditations in the order that I've presented them to get the most out of it. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy transforming pain and bondage into freedom. 
I really recommend you look into my Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1 program online. It will touch every chakra. It gets you ready so that if you want to go deeper into yourself or consider being a professional Holistic Lifestyle Coach to help others live a holistic, healthy lifestyle, a more balanced lifestyle, a more spiritually connected and open lifestyle, then HLC2, our professional training program, is a very, very great place to go. And if you want to get into all sorts of cool stuff with me and meet interesting and fascinating people, check out my podcast, Living 4D, with Paul Check. It's on iTunes. It's on most of the podcast outlets. And it's on chekinstitute.com. And the homepage, you'll see a tab that says podcast. Go right there. You can scroll through. Uh, the uh, many podcasts now, over 40 uh, so far this year. So thanks for joining me. Lots of love. Enjoy your journey into yourself, into the world, into great spirit. I'm Paul Check.